As of today, June 1st, 2021, it has stood silently for 108 years and in that time has probably gone unnoticed by more passers-by than can be counted. Yet it commemorates an event in Madison County's history that is unparalleled for its drama, one that forever establishes our county's unique place in Indiana history. On May 25th, 1801, 220 years ago this week, eight people, including missionary John Peter Kluge and his wife Anna Marie, and six Delaware Indian converts, Jacob and Mary, Abigail, Abigail's daughter Anna Salome, and her, ch her two children, passed somewhere very near this place where we stand now, and made their way down to the river, knelt and gave thanks to God for their safe journey. The next day, another two people, Joshua and a Mahican Indian and son Christian arrived. And finally, on May 30th, eight more people arrived. The second missionary, Andrew Luckenbach, six Delaware Indians, including John Thomas, his wife, Catherine, and their three children, Marcus, Juliana, Bethia, plus two Indian boatmen, Ska and Michael, 18 in all with high hopes that their mission would succeed. But that hope eventually faded as evidenced by the following. Quote, we were quite alone in the midst of a wholly unrestrained wild people who burned and murdered their own people. Close quote. This sounds like a place far from here. However, the statement is taken from a letter written March the 27th 1806 by someone living here. The site was the Moravian Mission Station located on White River, about two miles east of downtown Anderson. Two Moravian missionaries had journeyed here from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Their purpose was to bring Christianity to the Delaware Indians living along the White River in central Indiana territory. The Moravian church had a long history of sending their people to frontiers all over the world to bring the word of God to the unknowing. And so it was that on October the 15th, 1800, after being ordained by the church, 23-year-old Abraham Luckenbach and 32-year-old John Peter Kluge began their 1,000-mile journey to the White River. Prior to leaving, Kluge had taken a wife, chosen by casting lots. Her name was Anna Marie Rank, and she was 28 years old. They reached the Moravian Mission at Goshen on the Tuscarora River in Ohio, November the 18th. Here they spent the winter preparing for the following spring when they would venture forth into the dark and foreboding unknown territory called Indiana. They left on March 24, 1801 and arrived on May 25, 1801 at a place chosen for them by the Delaware Indians. The Delaware called the site Wapaminski, which means chestnut tree. Brother Kluge left an excellent description of where they spent the next five years and four months. And I quote, This place where we live at present is on a high hill. In front on the river bank, the level space on the top is not extensive because on both sides there are little hills. At the rear, however, there is a wide plain thickly covered with oaks. On the other side of the river, right opposite to us, there is a plain with high grass, which is our planting land at present. At the side of our place, at the foot of the hill, there's also a plain overgrown with grass like a meadow, which runs along the river for a mile." Close quote. Research of the station site has yielded a picture of how extensive it was. The first shelter was not erected until June 3rd, nine days after arriving. It was nothing more than a crude hut, built Indian fashion from tree branches covered with bark. Eventually, they built nine log houses, 14 by 16 feet square, and several huts occupied by the Indians who lived with the missionaries. They built a church, which was a hut 15 feet square, a schoolhouse, cattle stable, hay shed, and a horse barn. Nearby was their cemetery, which they named God's Acre. They planted a small vegetable garden surrounded by a picket fence to keep out unwanted animals and a, cell a cellar for vegetable storage in the winter months. In the garden, they grew lettuce, cu cu cucumbers, white turnips, kohlrabi, beets, watermelon, and muskmelon. 
Just below the level space was a narrow plain between them and the river's edge. This plain was approximately one mile in length. It was here that they planted hay to feed their livestock. The yield was about two tons each year. All of this was located on the north side of the river. Immediately across from them on the river's south side was where they planted corn, potatoes, beans, pumpkins, tobacco, and cabbage. Within a month after arriving, they had set out 200 cabbage plants, some of which, when harvested, was pickled to make sauerkraut, a favorite of these, German, of these people of German heritage. In the first year, the area cleared for planting was small, but later the plantation grew to be 20 acres. Cattle were kept on the south side where they were allowed to graze. They soon learned the cattle would not stay out of the corn, and so split rail fences were erected, eventually enclosing all 20 acres. In addition to cattle, they raised hogs and chickens. The river supplied an abundance of fish, but meat was scarce. They had to rely on the Indians for a supply of wild game, and this was not always available because the Indians did not hunt year round. Each year they made several hundred pounds of sugar plus several gallons of molasses during February and early March. Their sugar hut was located in a grove of maple trees about a mile and one half south of the station. In between all the work that was required to sustain them, they conducted religious services several times each day for those who visited the station. In the beginning, there were many Indians who came, ate, and stayed for days at a time. However, near the end, of, near the, end the numbers fell off as other factors influenced the Indians and changed their attitude toward the missionaries. While living here, Anna Maria Kluge gave birth to three children. The first son, Charles Frederick, arrived July 21, 1801, only eight weeks after his parents arrived. Charles Frederick Kluge has the distinction of being the first white child born in what is today Madison County, Indiana. On September the 1st, 1803, Henrietta Kluge was born and John Henry Kluge was born December 31st, 1805. All three of those children survived to adulthood. Disheartened by the lack of conversions and open hostilities by the Indians, it was decided to abandon the effort at noon on September the 16th, 1806, and once again passing very near this spot, the three missionaries and three small children began their return trip to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, where they arrived on November the 12th. In 1821, a government survey was conducted to map the area acquired by the Delaware uh, during the Treaty of St. Mary's in 1818, which included what is today Madison County. The report stated a structure was found on the site that resembled a fort. It was probably the remains of one of the log houses. On January the 12th, 1912, the Honorable John L. Forkner, a Madison County historian and former mayor of Anderson, wrote to Frederick Webb Hodge of the Bureau of American Ethnology, Smithsonian Institution, Washington, D.C., in response to an inquiry from him seeking information about the mission site. Forkner wrote, and I quote, the site of the old mission is yet surrounded by many chestnut trees, while, there are, while they are not Navy product of this portion of Indiana. Nothing remains to mark the spot where this mission was once located. Until a few years ago, some of the foundation logs of the huts were noticeable, but the ravages of time have obliterated all semblance of their presence. An old orchard planted about the same time the Indians removed from White River in 1821 yet stands as the only monument of the memory of this locality. The Daughters of the American Revolution are making an attempt to preserve this notable spot by erecting a monument in the locality." Close quote. In the fall of 1912, the Kiktawina chapter, the Daughters of the American Revolution in Anderson, decided to mark the site of the mission with an appropriate monument and began to canvass for funds. The monument was unveiled at 3 p.m. on Sunday, June 1, 1913. Jacob Pyatt Dunn, noted American historian, journalist, and author, delivered the dedicatory address. Arthur W. Brady, an official with the Union Traction Company of Indiana, made a short address. His wife, Mrs. Caroline Brady, former regent of the chapter who headed the committee in charge of the ceremonies, spoke on behalf of the DAR and the presentation speech was made by Mrs. Henry Durbin. 
Anderson's First Baptist Church Orchestra provided music for the ceremony, which was attended by a reported 150 people. Among the notables attending was Miss Alice Kluge of Hope, Indiana, and Mrs. Emma Brumfield of Richmond, Indiana, daughters of John Henry Kluge, the second son and third child born to the missionary John Peter Kluge and his wife Anna during their time at the mission station. The original monument configuration consisted of a bronze 9 by 14 inches by 1 half inch thick, which was embedded into in and bolted to a large boulder taken from the mission site. The pyramidal shaped boulder was described as being about three feet high and four feet square at the base. It was the first tablet of its kind in Madison County and among the first erected by the DAR in Indiana. It was placed roughly one half mile north of where the mission site was located. In 1913, that area was on a farm owned by Matthias Hudgel. His home was located on the south side of East 10th Street roughly one and one half miles east of downtown Anderson. It was near the northwest corner of his yard next to the road that the DAR chose to place the marker. Approximately three and a half years later on Tuesday morning, November 7th, 1916, the Anderson Herald reported the theft of the bronze tablet. The thief had pried off the bolts which had been set in concrete and made off with it. Two days later, the newspaper reported the arrest of a Muncie man the previous day. The tablet had been recovered in a barrel at Metalworks factory in Muncie. The barrel had been delivered there from a Muncie junkyard for disposal. An employee at the Metalworks facility found it and reported the discovery to the president of the company, who informed the officers of the DAR and returned it to them. The police were informed and the arrest of the man followed soon afterwards. Initially, the Kiktawina chapter planned to level off the boulder so that another stone could be placed and the tablet secured to the new stone. That would have raised the tablet to thus providing a better view. Those arrangements were expected to be completed within a short period of time. Obviously, there was a change in plans for today located on the side of the original marker. It's a solid piece of granite standing approximately 5 feet and measuring 13 inches thick by 20 inches wide. On September the 27th, 1966, another missionary descendant visited Anderson during the statewide celebration of Indiana's sesquicentennial. Her name was Miss Martha O. Luckenbach of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. The great-great-grandniece of missionary Abraham Luckenbach was the guest of the Madison County Sesquicentennial Committee. Today we are pleased again to have in attendance descendants of the missionaries of the Moravian Mission to which belongs the honor of being the first to establish a regular religious organization in the county of Madison. And in conclusion, I feel compelled to say something I have expressed many times before. For over 100 years, our county has been the benefactor of the good work done by the Kiktawina chapter, Daughters of the American Revolution. Their members, past and present, have achieved a special place in preserving the things that are important to us. Their work is best appreciated when one considers this axiom, quote, a people who take no pride in the noble achievements of remote ancestors will never achieve anything worth, worthy to be remembered with pride by remote descendants, close quote. As long as the DAR is working amongst us to preserve our history, this warning does not apply here. Thank you. Mm -hmm.